metalheads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. On today's episode, we are tackling a behemoth topic. What are the most memorable and impactful, important moments in heavy music history? To do this, I brought a few other fellow metalheads to the table so we can discuss in depth. This is a multi-episode series, with this being part two, the culture. So with that, let's get heavy. All right, what about uh, iconic moments when it comes to, for example, like Dio, the horns. He, he introduced the horns. That's huge. That right? huge. That's huge. That's huge. Metal Massacre, kind of doing the whole, uh, you know, the, the, the tapes, right, that circulate through, that's how people got discovered into, like, Metallica's debut, and, and without that, it's just tape you know, trading, tape trading, exactly. Oh, Headbangers Ball. This is the all-new Headbangers Ball. That was an MTV party. Headbangers show. Beavis and Butthead. Beavis and Butthead. Beavis and Butthead. Right, right. Beavis and Butthead had a segment in the middle where they play a music video, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was Absolutely. awesome. It was usually. And it was like it was white, a white zombie, zombie Pantera. I, I would argue that the the Beavis and Butthead metal segment was better than Headbangers. Yeah. Well, not only that, but you could even make a case with. Was that a bear? I mean, maybe it's impactful. I mean, it didn't reach as many viewers, but. Still pretty dang high. No, this is not that song, but it gets cool later. That was yeah, yeah. yeah. viewership like no other. I mean, that launch was it Mike Judge? Yeah. yeah. So maybe you would disagree with this because not as big a fan of Rick Rubin necessarily, but when Rick Rubin and Slater meet, because that's what would change significantly than Slayer and their entire sound yeah. and then the iconic album so because of Rick Rubin. And their connection. Uh, I think Rick Rubin's just kind of a leech. Potentially, potentially, but I mean, he brings out whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it's it's hard to quantify. I agree. I agree. I agree. I'll accept your California perspective. I agree. We can lay on some lawn mats. All right. No, how about not. how about <laughs> how about any how about any impactful music videos going to MTV? I mean MTV. I don't uh, want to put MTV. Itself. It. Welcome to MTV Music Television, the world's first 24-hour stereo video Literally music channel. the day channel. that they went on board, like they What's, came out. Ra- that radio, they the, the DJ, uh, radio kill. No, no, not video, video kill, kill the radio, radio star. star. Why don't we get back right now to some great music, video, in stereo. Within like the first hour and something like the 13th video ever played, it just happens to be none other than Iron Maiden, right? Which, which I mean, easily could be argued introduced metal for the first time to the world because up to that point, you know, Sabbath, Priest, Motorhead, and the other you know, proto-metal bands, it, it could only reach, you know, those who happen to buy the album or see them live. I mean, but let's be honest, you, videos, music videos changed everything. MTV, I mean, it was, it's a game changer. But, I mean, part of what makes, you know, music videos so impactful was more the artistic side of things. So, I guess, you know, what are some truly legendary music videos? Closer, the closer video. Okay, I, I, it's up there. But then, like head like how a whole. How about most watched? I mean, would, well, would that not? It would. It would. It would. It would. Closer a, video probably has had more views. But if than, you're gonna do that, then wouldn't it? Wouldn't um, that November Rain? November Rain I mean, was the very first uh, billion uh, billion of the yeah. watched video. I'll give you that. Even though I kind of feel like I want to say the closer because closer represented like I mean that one was I mean because otherwise in Tool Tool's music videos were really big deal too yeah, um, yeah. They, they were really big deal um, Tool in general I mean Lateralis and not Lateralis but with the um, Anima Anima I mean, they, I mean I don't know their debut was <laughs> under is it Anima Anima. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It had it had, had, it had, it had, it had, it had uh, the eyes like staring at you, and it was like, 
the holographic, right? Like, yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah, Metallica um, had videos, but most of them were not good. Well, like, they, well, some. I mean, Unforgiven was legitimately an unbelievable music video. That one was legit. But uh, the most of them were. I agree. They weren't really. They, I guess one was all right. Uh, one actually, that's a big. Deal. That actually, a good that's one. a really big deal. Because that was a big deal for that. That literally took Metallica to another level, and they were like really against doing music videos. But then they, they did that, and they did it kind of their way. And they, that was darn too. The yeah. problem was he had to be able to sit there for seven minutes and watch it. Actually, didn't they even play one live at that Grammys? Which kind of just added Not even more fuel ago, to the fire. Heavy metal was confined to the underground, but times change, and the Grammys change with the times. And we acknowledge the art form that is keeping. The rebellious essence of rock and roll alive, and have added a Grammy award in that category for the first time this year. So here to perform the song "One" from the Grammy-nominated album and "Justice for All," Metallica. The best hard rock metal performances are. And justice for all, Metallica. Literally, everyone thought they won the Grammy, but then end up being going to Jethro Tull. And it was a huge freaking, <laughs> huge uh, cry, a cry out. And then it like forced like the Academy's hands, and like it was just a big freaking outcry, a big deal, right? Like that was. Yeah, it's a scene and it's a mess, but is it impactful? transformative? They continue to right, still right, not okay, represent right, about, metal music. <laughs> another, another one with, with Metallica is the Napster. Okay, I'll give yeah. you that. Yeah, I'll right. give you that. That okay. was that was a thing. I think it's still stupid, but that was a thing. Mr. Alric, uh, I, look, I really look forward to hearing your testimony as well as all the others. So we'll start with you. Okay. Napster hijacked our music without asking. They never sought our permission. Our catalog of music simply became available for free downloads on the Napster system. Okay. I mean, free is the point of Because it's like hair metal. Yeah. Which I'm not, I'm not knocking hair metal necessarily, but it had its place. <laughs> but it's awful. But it... <laughs> Nirvana, no. then, okay, Nirvana's, um... Uh... I mean... It like smells like tears. That's like the... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of iconic, though. Like, iconic. Everybody knows that. It's like, it's like, it's like the it's album. Cheerleaders. Everybody knows <laughs> that video, right? It's true. It's Hello, true. I'm Chris. Hello, I'm Kurt. I'm Dave. And we are Nirvana, the band is on TV too much. Here's another. Prague doesn't get much attention, but it did have a shiny moment in Pull Me Under. The music video by Dream Theater, which did really well on MTV in the early 90s. And actually, you know what? An even shinier moment happens every December, thanks to Trans-Siberian Orchestra. which was the pet project from Prague band Sabotage and their producer, Paul O'Neill. Talk about a metal gift to the world. Hey rockers, I'm Beer Von Wright, the creator of Graphic Metal. Hope you've enjoyed this episode so far. If you have, consider donating to us in order to keep this channel going. As always, remember to like, subscribe to be kept in the loop, and to help out the YouTube algorithm. And if you think that others would enjoy this, share it. Now back to our scheduled program, Long Way of Rock. You could make a case for, from a pure design standpoint, Eddie. I remain as Eddie's mascot. Sure. Because that was oh, pretty yeah. important. That's like one of the longest yeah. running mascots, probably. Yeah. Who else has got... All right, who else even has a mascot? The thing is, there's there's ones that have like like they do the cover like Budgie had like always the Budgie bird like on a and on all their album covers, but they didn't literally have like a bird like on stage or anything like that. Like literally, Eddie was everywhere. I mean, like, do you count 
I don't know the names of the war guys, but oh, are gore, they, but they're, they're just like straight up though. That's not really they are in the but, 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 the but and that thing, fair point. That's not, The moment that they played live for the first time. Like, kind of like, because I was tempted by Ghost. Ghost first show. Like, you could make a case, I mean, lower in the, in the yeah. to not like high up in the list, but like on the list. Because that was a pretty big deal, pretty shocking and whatnot. But Gore, that would, a kiss yeah, thematically yeah. when Kit, I mean, everyone talks about how important a kiss was. Yeah. Um, All right. Whether uh, you like their music or not. Uh, weren't weren't your garments like their mask? I was super visual head of math guy now. One thing it's true. What about like actually a mo who was the first that like broke a guitar on stage, like live? Oh, Hendrix. Right? Was, it, was Hendrix the first? Well, he said he was on fire. Doesn't the story go like Hendrix was performing with like three or four other bands, and the first band came out and smashed a guitar or beat, broke the stage up or something, and he had to outdo them. Interesting. The story of the guitar damage, it starts with Pete Townsend. Oh, the who? Yeah, the Who's World Smashing Guitar. The first time he broke the guitar on stage, it was basically an accident. And then they... Working on stage with a low ceiling, he cracked the headstock on his uh, Rickenbacker, then decided to follow through with the destruction. And then they started blowing up and drums. They started, and yeah, exactly. I don't feel there's anything objectionable about any of our songs, but I don't feel anyone, anyone else has the right to rate our One of the big the ones is the PMRC. That was the group. I don't know the actual Elvis. public the mothers. Oh, uh, you're talking about Tipper Gore. And... About yeah, like that whole like that the, they pretty brought the parental advisory and yeah. whatnot. But there was the they had the filthy 15. Artists are just saying, hey, lighten up, get off a case. This is what art's all about. It's being clean. If you don't like it, then turn into something else. You know. Yeah, like, does that ring a bell? Yeah. Yeah, so like that, this. and of course There's a lot like of metal two life crew and the rest. like Judas Priest and a lot of metal like bands like they had they had they, they were identified on that list, and so like that one has to be, that has to be probably the on the most list. Evil part of the PMRC and people like Tipper Gore and Jesse Helms is they play on the fears of parents who are too chicken to talk to their own. That a lot of attention. To, negative you know, attention. Negative attention, but attention nonetheless. And that's not necessarily a bad thing for aggressive music. Do you endorse mass shootings? You also so, got um, so Marilyn Manson being uh, basically literally the scapegoat for the Columbine massacre. It was on KMFDM, um, right? Yep. It was done on the release of date of. It was also Adolf Hitler's birthday or something crazy. Well, no, music was the escape. That's the only thing that uh, had no judgments. You know, you can put on a record and it's not going to yell at you for dressing the way you do. It's going to make you feel better about it. Mm -hmm. Some will be so brash to ask if we believe that all who hear Manson tomorrow night will go out and commit violent acts. The Another answer is area is that um, show that Metallica and a bunch of other bands played, like three other bands at the airstrip in Russia. To like over oh. a million people. Oh, it was also like it created that whole. Um, I mean, the, the fights broke out like it created chaos. I think the army was there. Yeah, like well, the Russian well, army. Yeah. Some fun uh, today. They didn't want anyone to want it to happen. Because we actually you talked about festivals, like when um, uh, what's his face out with Lollapalooza when he creates Lollapalooza. That was Lollapalooza, a huge big deal because of like the whole like pollination of all sorts of crap, right? Gender, you know, you know, bringing down. Wasn't that how Ozzy started? Well, Ozfest too. I was gonna say Ozfest too. Lollapalooza. Actually, it was a real reaction. It was a reaction. Right. Yeah. Exactly. He got pissed off. Yep. Well, no, it's like, it, it was, yeah, we did Sharon. Yeah. Sharon, like, Sharon you won't have me, we'll do our own thing. Like, yeah. yeah. And, well, and actually, 
that the Osborne show. Uh, <laughs> I mean, again, not necessarily the attention that necessarily. I don't but know I that mean, like, anybody but in pop, humanity pop culture. any favors. Metal history. This Film. is Spinal Tap. This is a fine line between stupid and clever. This is Spinal Tap. This is Spinal Tap. <laughs> Heavy metal. Heavy metal, heavy metal, 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 heavy metal. Airheads. Airheads? Airheads. Was that Polly Shore? No, that was um, Adam Sandler. uh, I want to say even, uh, what's his face? That becomes a mummy. Brandon Fraser? Brandon Fraser. I want to say maybe. You have your orders, Chief, not get cracking. Well, oh, soundtracks. I mean, dude, I think I think soundtracks will probably get it. The Crow, uh, Spawn. Natural Born Killers. Okay. There was also um, Ozzy biting of the bat. Right? Did he though? That's, that's literally, that's literally like I think one of the most important, the most, the most powerful things about it though. That is another that's thing like one everybody of most, knows this. Yeah. Uh, we what, got, was, what was the, uh, where you got CDs in the mail? Well that was... Um, like, oh, I, yeah. It was a three letter, right? CMC, CMC. Or Columbia House? Columbia House. House. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, that one has to be on the list. I, I think yeah, that has to be on the list. Or, you take uh, the little stickers off and you I put mean, it on. I mean, I think Columbia House was like huge. Well, well my magazines, there's got to be like, what's the big? Kerrang? Was Kerrang like that? Kerrang, Spin. Yeah. I think Heavy Metal got first identified on. A magazine that was like it was like called Cracker or something or Cream. I think it was called Cream, and I want to say it was a reaction to um, Sir Sir Lord Baltimore. I believe it was a reaction for their debut album. It's a band way back, and that was pro me- proto metal. No idea. Um, no idea. Yeah, <laughs> was, uh, right. This falls All into right. the category of I don't know. I think the one that most people recognize was actually Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf in eight in seventy eight on their debut, seventy seven, seventy eight. They really say in the lyrics, "Heavy metal and born to be wild," right, or something like that. Like in the, that's I think that's like what most people kind of recognize is like, like the term, right? Um, but either way, really hit next time. It's an anthem. That is a. It's a stadium song. <laughs> it is, and it's still played in stadium. Yeah, still is. Well, but, yeah, it's it is one hundred percent an iconic shock song. R- rock. <laughs> <laughs> Not jock <Jack> rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I think I think we're jock I think we can move forward. I think I think that's enough for. End of chapter two. When our journey continues with part three, the debate. That video will be available shortly in the upper right in just a moment. If you missed part one, the music upper left. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'm Verifon Wright. You've been watching Graphic Metal. Until next time, cheers and keep on rocking.